What's up everybody? This is a watercolor tutorial slash demo day and we are going to paint a lovely simple night urban scene. As I offered quite a lot of still lives demo in my last videos, leaves, flowers, fruit, I thought it would be nice this time to work on something a bit different, a kind of a wider scene but still focused. And I spot this view through my window the other day and I couldn't resist painting it and I thought I would like to share the process with you. The photo is a bit dark but you can still see what uh, I was drawn to. Nice light focal point with the moon that I could uh, paint with negative painting, the roofs with the chimneys and antennas that create a nice uh, silhouette and in the middle a gorgeous variegated sky with variations of blue and a bit of uh, pink clouds perfect to paint. I'm going to try to use uh, this uh, mirror setting for the demo too. Hey, I like it! That's a bit like seeing you through the looking glass. Anyway, you don't have to look at me. Uh, of course, the main uh, point is looking at uh, the paper and the watercolor thing, but uh, it's uh, still enjoyable for me to be able to talk to you and maybe sometimes uh, for you <laughs> just to remember who is uh, behind this mysterious uh, hand and brushes. <laughs> Here is all the info about the material I am using. You will also find everything in the description box below the info along with some links so feel free to check it out so negative painting silhouette colors wonderful work <laughs> So I'm going to start with the sky. Usually when I have a strong focal point, especially a light one, I am going to use negative painting around to paint. I tend to use this as a starting point. So I'm going to start painting the sky around the moon. So the sky is kind of a blue, purplish blue uh, at the top. So I'm going to use the ultramarine, which seems uh, the perfect color. The Daniel Smith uh, French ultramarine I am using has this kind of um, slightly warm blue. Even if the palette is a bit dirty, that's not a problem because I, you know, always nice to have kind of a more subtle color and so I am uh, going to start by defining uh, the moon. My palette is a bit in the way. <laughs> so laying down the brush the most I can even despite the presence of the palette and trying gradually to grow the shape of uh, the crescent for the moon maybe it's slightly big <laughs> but it can be nice to have a great uh, presence of the subject so as usual i, I like uh, this kind of uh, irregular edges in here all around and even this kind of white spot in here are nice. And then the sky is getting a bit greener and greener when you go uh, lower. It's usually the case, but you can also see it uh, in the photos. So I pick again some ultramarine. I'm going to add a bit of turquoise. Maybe my uh, green turquoise, slightly opaque, can be slightly more subtle than my um, phthalo turquoise. And I am working on the sky, making it, uh, you know, gradually a bit turquoise and more turquoise. I can also dilute it a bit. So yeah, maybe even a bit more. Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> but yeah, let's have fun with the color. That's nice. And afterwards, I'm going to add the silhouette of the building with a second layer. But for now, I am just uh, keep going with my wash. And I know that the building will be in here uh, at the bottom. Here we are. I use the kind of a light uh, color in here so that the building can stand out with a bit uh, stronger contrast uh, here. And once uh, the sky is still wet, I'm going to drop this kind of a uh, pink uh, clouds, so probably with a mix of this uh, crinacridon rose and a bit of uh, Naples yellow because it's kind of orangish, so I think it can work uh, really nicely uh, in this. Uh, sky atmosphere and because it's a bit opaque it's going to create kind of defined clouds just a bit of a soft edge but uh, you know not too not too fuzzy and not uh, mixing in a weird way with the turquoise maybe i can even yeah put some lighter touch kind of uh, yeah pure naples yellow in here uh, Naples yellow also have a different color depending on the br uh, brand. I uh, tried Senoli one and I didn't really like the hue really much, so that's why I'm using this kind of apricot color I uh, like uh, really much, so that's why I'm using uh, this uh, one. 
And clouds, like every subject, has a shadow a bit uh, underneath. So I'm going, maybe even without washing my brush uh, too much, adding just slightly bit of a dark gray shadow. Maybe just this moon glow can do the trick. And maybe the, my clouds are already a bit dark, but just adding a few touches at the bottom of the clouds once again while it's still wet can really add kind of dimension and a 3d effects uh, volume to your clouds and you know as uh, it's kind of diluted with the wet uh, paper i can add a bit more maybe these clouds are a bit uh, a bit strong i could have them make them more subtle but um, i guess it can look nice uh, anyway so that's it for the first layer. I am going to wait for this uh, to dry so that I can add the silhouette of the roofs and the chimneys and antenna at the top in here and maybe just a really light light wash on the moon because for real I was able to see a bit the texture of the moon so I can maybe try to catch this with a really subtle wash. Now that this wash is uh, dry, I'm going to be able to add uh, the following. So I am using the same brush, but this one is uh, newer. I put some uh, tape in here to recognize it, trying not to damage the points. But uh, here, because I want to sketch the antenna, I am probably going to use this one. Maybe I can start with the other one, just making the kind of uh, main uh, shapes and then switch to this one when I will uh, need the kind of finer point for the details. So for the dark wash, I am picking some moon glow. It could also be a mix of ultramarine and transparent red oxide, for example. Any mix that creates a dark color for me it could also be phthalo turquoise and crinacridon fuchsia. Maybe I can even uh, add uh, this a bit to my uh, moon glow. So just a bit of uh, phthalo turquoise and crinacridon to get uh, this kind of uh, dark color. And I can have a bit in my other brush. So the most important is not uh, to replicate uh, exactly the chimneys, but just having a kind of a nice uh, silhouette at the bottom of my sketch. So maybe I will personalize just a slightly bit uh, the real thing, but uh, mainly uh, I have this kind of uh, several uh, stage uh, chimneys. And then the lines are just slightly slanted. Maybe you can pick now the smaller brush to get these kind of bumps that appear you know because of the of the tiles and here i have a bit of uh, detail too maybe just slightly more of a red warm color and i'm going to keep uh, this kind of uh, edge uh, at the bottom a rough edge that I like. Maybe I added <laughs> too much uh, pink right now. And so I keep going with my uh, chimneys with a slanted line. This is a whole kind of uh, dynamic of uh, this. And then I can add uh, the chimney. I don't want uh, this to dry too much before I add the antenna, so I'm going to do it uh, right away. A bit of a final line would be nice. Okay. And, uh, I think this other one is a bit bulky so i'm going to try to do better in here when you paint on already painted the paper it's always slightly more difficult to have really fine lines even if the paper is dry So I need to yeah, make kind of the edge I want here at the bottom. Really like how the darker part uh, has a strong contrast with the light sky and the moon. The spacing between the chimneys shouldn't be too regular, so I'm going to put this one uh, yeah, closer to the other one so that it doesn't look too boring and uh, regular. And oh yeah, there, there is this kind of bumpy 
thing on the roof, which make it uh, also, you know, kind of more believable and slightly more interesting silhouette. Here we are. If you like, you can add uh, just a slightly bit of scraping once it started to dry, kind of uh, not uh, so shiny anymore. And, you know, just a bit of uh, scrape on the roof to give a bit of more detail. So, of course, here to the right, uh, the paper is uh, drier, so it can be for me the right time to do so. And to the left, I just uh, painted, so it's uh, still probably a bit uh, too wet to add uh, something, but uh, already in a few places it can add a bit of uh, something nice, you know, playing also with the contrast here and there. And so on the moon I want it really, really, really subtle. I want the moon to stay as a white presence in my sketch. So I'm going to use what I... I should find another name for it. I call this dirty water when I just want to imagine that it's only water with the less pigment I can. And it's kind of a warm grey, just a slightly yellowish thing. So probably just a bit of... Um, dirty warm palette or go tight or a slightly bit of quinacridone gold uh, just to have something that it's not white but uh, still really really light and I can tell that there were a few so I'm going to use really few pigments even fewer I am wiping my uh, brush on a black uh, <laughs> wash glove out of the frame right now so just to add a bit of uh, this and softening the edge out of the moon, maybe just a bit grey in some point. Please share this tutorial to your friend if you think they can enjoy uh, painting this with the hashtag paint with Anlaw and learning more about loose watercolor, especially without pencil guidelines. Subscribe if you haven't already to join the creative side of the fall and see you soon this week. Oh, and by the way, yes, I will still use the rabbit. Oh, what a relief. <laughs> I just want to use him or her when I can give him or her a role and it has a purpose for with the teaching content of the video. So probably he will pop up in the video from time to time. Hello. As a surprise for you. <laughs>